The Iron Age of Media is in full swing, and it would seem a lot of conversation is happening around it. One of the conversations that I've been seeing a lot, and one that I've been a little involved in, is about gatekeeping when it comes to this Iron Age of Media, and what that could potentially mean. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce, and welcome to A Drink With Crazy. Tonight, we're going to discuss what gatekeeping can do for the Iron Age of Media, and I hope you all like being here. If you guys like what I am doing, don't forget to go and click the links down below to support me in other places. But without any further ado, I am drinking cheap beer, and for those of you out there who know what beer this is, go ahead and comment it down in the links below, but let's get into this topic. So the Iron Age of Media, what is it? Well, I define that. It is essentially a decentralized version of new media that is coming out in order to basically say, hey, we're tired of Marvel and DC and we're tired of, you know, the standard creation methods and many, many people out there rose to the call and started writing their own stories, whether it be novels or it be something like comic books or poems or whatever else that they are doing. Now, because of all of this, it was very noticeable when Eric July came out with his ISOM number one and Ripaverse campaign. Once that happened, a major YouTube personality, like if you don't know this guy, why are you even on my channel? No, please stay here, please. No, 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 I say, anyway. Razorfist came out with a video days later and talked about creating the culture and becoming the culture and what we can do. If they won't let you into the culture, screw those guys, let's become the culture. And so with all of that being said, we now see a plethora of creatives coming out saying, yes, we are the Iron Age. We are the creators that are coming out and saying, you know what, we are done with what they are doing with our childhood franchises and no more will we stand by and wish and hope and pay for their product so that one day maybe it gets back to where it was no these guys are coming out writing their own stories and putting them out into the ether that is the internet now what is even better than all of that is the amount of support and this energy that is around it it is very very intense this energy but it's a good energy it's a happy energy and i made the comment that you know one of the things that we should do is we should never gatekeep the fans but we should gatekeep the creators of the iron age now at right now the iron age is just a movement right similar to what comics gate was years and years ago the iron age and actually the iron age envelops even the comics gate creators but with the iron age being this movement people get very very gun shy about the world words gatekeep we don't want to gatekeep we shouldn't have to gatekeep well the good thing is is that built upon decentralization and using those foundations of decentralization it would be very very hard for people to accept somebody who would come out and claim to be iron age now my only point when it comes to gatekeeping is to gatekeep the creators right make sure that you are not sending money to the creators who are taking the stories that you enjoy and then turning them into bastardizations and complete just horrible amalgamations of what they shouldn't be this is what the iron age of media should absolutely turn into is making sure that we as fans are purchasing and buying those things that we like keeping this movement going for as long as we can before it seems to become some sort of internet cliche right and before creators start to be, oh you're an iron age creator well you're not marvel or dc but the thing is is that what this has that comics gate didn't have is it does have that decentralized factor to it so it is independent people coming out there saying hey we're iron age and then a small group of people checking them out and then saying mm, yes you are or no you're not and that's where the gatekeeping comes into play now i don't say gatekeeping in the traditional sense that most people are using it because i am using it as a more broad term to make sure that we are sending our money to the creators who ultimately deserve it it's something that i think 
in my last video where I mentioned this briefly that I didn't quite touch on the intricacies of what gatekeeping could do and how it could keep the movement going forward. And ultimately, a lot of people look at that and say, no, gatekeeping is something that should never be done. We shouldn't do it. It's bad. It's going to start uh, making people go away. Once this goes from the Iron Age movement to Iron Age Inc., right? That's when all of a sudden gatekeeping becomes a bad thing because we, like we have seen, Marvel and DC and other comics out there have decided that they're going to change their stories to a point and tell the fans, if you don't support what we're doing, you're not a fan, you're a bigot, you're an ist, you're a phobe, and these are the types of situations that I want to try and clear up for the Iron Age movement. Again, this is a movement. This is a cultural movement. This is an artistic movement movement we have seen many of them throughout mankind and yet we get to witness another one in our day and age no different than the movement and the artistic movement that was around the 70s and 80s with fantastic movie creation we saw something that changed the world during that time period and yet we sit here and we are a lucky enough generation to see another movement that is going to ultimately change storytelling now why is it important that i say to gatekeep the creators don't what i mean by this is don't let creators come out there and simply because they see something popular like the iron age and a lot of buzz around it try to say i'm iron age and then they literally have the backing of major corporations they literally have all the backing um <clears throat> Uh, of the Twitters as it would and then try to come out and say, oh, well, I'm Iron Age because, you know, and then you look at it and you go, OK, well, that book is obviously just pandering to the political crowd that's out there. That right there in a decentralized network such as the Iron Age in a decentralized movement such as the Iron Age would not fly. And what I my point that I wanted to stress that I was not able to stress is that we as customers need to be ever vigilant and instead of sending our money to the these creations that are rapidly declining or trying to inject political notions into well our media we should say no we should stop it we should say no and at the root when it is at its inception we pull it out and say you are not an iron age creator the iron age creators are not centralized they are decentralized they are a part of the parallel economy that we are trying to build that was my point when i was talking about gatekeeping and it's something so easy to do and maybe gatekeeping isn't the proper term here but sadly i'm just a guy who drinks beer on youtube so thank you all so much for watching cheers everybody Thank you all for being here on A Drink With Crazy. If you guys never want to miss a notification for the channel, go down in the link in the description and click that button to follow me and support me over on Locals. It's free to join, but that's where you can support me with money if you so choose. Also, don't forget to click those Rumble and Odyssey links so that way we can get over there and keep that growing. And until next time, cheers, everybody.